Hello friends, today we will learn about the random forest classifier and based on the random forest classifier, we are going to predict the wine quality. So first make the heading. Wine quality prediction. Okay. Okay. So first importing all the libraries, what are the necessary libraries for do the machine learning program? So import numpy as M np import fundas as pd. Let me import pandas as pd, then from escalon dot model selection import train test split. This is the library which we can use to segregate our data set. Some of the data set will take as training data set and some of the data set will take as a testing data set. That means the entire data set, it will be segregated into two parts. It will be splitted into two parts. Some are the for training and some are for, for testing. From ensemble import random forest classifier and to check the accuracy in the at last when we'll check that how much our model is going to predict what is the accuracy of our designed model to for that purpose we are importing for scalar we are importing matrix for matrix we will take the accuracy from scalar import matrix so let's run it random forest classifier okay random i wrote it random okay random forest classifier so here guys you have observed that if you put something wrong word your jupiter will throw error okay so let's run it again okay all the libraries are important now i am going to import the data set so I'm taking data set as wine data. Now PD dot read CSV. I'm using the pandas library to read the CSV file. What are the files we are going to import that is in CSV format. So I'm putting the path where I have kept my file. So let me check it where I have kept it my file. Okay. I have kept it here. So just put the name the path name after that put the file name as well let me check what are the files name i have given okay csv and here i am putting r so let's run it and let display the wine data okay this is the wine data on that wine data which i imported few minutes back on that data set total 1,599 rows are there and including 12 columns. And if you observe it carefully, there is one column is there. That is the quality column. Quality means you are going to find out what are the quality. That means you can say that quality column, you can say it's the output column. That means from that particular column, you will understand that what, are, what is the quality of that one particular, you know, wine. Okay. So what I am doing now, I'm taking all the columns except quality as a input segment. Okay. And I'm taking it X under X data set and that particular column, which is giving you output. That means the, here in our data set, it is quality. I'm taking that quality column as a output. That means I'm taking that quality under Y data set. Okay. So let's do it 
x is equal to y dot drop. That means I am taking the entire data set of y. Just I will drop that particular column. That means quality column. So let's drop it. Now I am using axis is equal to one. Why axis is equal to one? Because we are going to drop one particular column. When you are going to drop any particular column. Not any particular. When you are going to drop any column, in that case you will use axis is equal to one. And if you are going to drop any row, in that case you will use axis is equal to zero. So let's run it. Now let's print it x. Yeah, you will observing. You are observing that in the x data set there is no columns of quality. Okay. Now I am taking that. Quality that particular column under y data set. So let's copy it, let's paste it, and let's remove it. Okay, why? And let's print it. Okay. If you observe carefully, you will see that in the quality there are various numbers are there, but here you are just observing two things only five or six. So let me check it. What are the values are available under y? Okay. So to check that thing, you will use y dot value counts. So let's run it. So under quality, you are getting different type of quality. You are getting quality as five. You are getting quality as six. You are getting quality seven, quality four, quality eight, quality three. So what I am doing, I am taking all the qualities which are less than seven. I'm taking all those qualities as zero, and what are the qualities which is seven or greater than seven? I'm taking those quality as one. That means that that is a good quality. Okay, I'm designing my model in such a way. So in that case, that means you have to convert what are the values which is less than what? What are the less than seven? You will convert those values to zero, and what are the values? Which are greater than seven, you will convert those values to one. To this conversion, I am using the lambda function. So just I am writing here using lambda function. Using lambda function. Okay. Let me add some rows. Okay. Lambda function. So I am using y. Is equal to y dot apply. Now I am using the lambda. Lambda, I can say that y value. Lambda y value such that one if y value greater than equal to one else. Zero. Okay. So let's run it. Now let's check it. Y dot value counts. And let's run it. Okay. Y value get at then. Okay. Not get at then one by mistake. I have put one. It will be seven. So I have to run it. Then I think I have to start it from beginning. Yeah, I have to start it from beginning. That means I have to import the data again. Okay, it's a good thing. What I am going to observe you: if any such type of situation comes where by mistake you did something, so in that case again you have to import your data from the beginning. Okay, otherwise you can't rectify it. So again, I am importing my data. If you see. Again, you are getting all the twelve rows, including quality. Now I am dropping the x. Now I am just printing the x. Now you are observing that the quality, that particular column, has been removed. Now I am taking as y. Now I am printing y. Now I am checking the value of y count. Now I am using it. Okay. So let me just uh, check it again. So that uh, again, mistake will not be happen. 
y value dot lambda y value one if y greater than one greater than seven. So let's run it. Okay. Now check the y value counts. Okay. So you are getting one thousand three hundred eighty two values as zero. That means one thousand three hundred eighty two wines are there, which have the quality less than seven, and two hundred seventeen wines are there, which have the quality seven or greater than seven. Okay. So you have segregated your data into x and y. That means x you are taking as input and y you are taking as output. So now you have splitted your data. Some of the data for training purpose and some of the data for testing purpose. So let me write it. So x train, x test, y train, y test is equal to train, test, split, x, y. Test size equal to zero point two. Since it's a large data set, you can take twenty percent data as a testing data, and remaining eighty percent data you are using for the modeling. That means for the training purpose. Okay, and random state, random state equal to three. What is the significance of random state? You can put random state two. You can put random state four as well. Random state is basically It is basically reproduce your data set, and it will be split your data. If you use the random state equal to two, in that case, you will get the different result, which I will get. Okay. If you put the random state four, you will get the different result, which I will get. So it is basically the reproduce your data and how your data will be splitted. That scenario comes under the random state. Okay. So let me run it. Okay. So your data has been splitted. There means some of the data are going to the training, and some of the data. Uh, going to the testing phase. Okay, so you are using the model equal to now you are importing the random forest classifier. Okay, I am using model equal to random forest and please check it carefully. You have to use R in capital, F in capital, something like that. If you put F in small, R in small, something. If you did some mistake in that case, it will throw you error. Okay, so just write it carefully. Random forest classifier. So let's run it. So you have splitted your data. Some of the data is for training purpose and some of the data for testing purpose. Those which are the data you have splitted for the training purpose, based on those data, will fit your model. Okay. So in that case, I am using model dot fit. So in that case, you will use that. Let me remove it. Okay, model dot fit, and you are using the x train. That means the training data set basically x train and y train. Okay, so let's run it. Okay, that means your model has been fitted with the help of the training data set. That means the x train and y train. Okay, now you have the x test data and you have the y test data. That means for the testing purpose, you will check your model accuracy based on those data. Okay, so in that case, you are using that y. Test y test prediction predict. That means you know that the y test prediction you are doing it will be p not o. Y test predict. So you are going to predict the y test value based on the x test value. So y test predict equal to model dot predict equal to you are using this. X test value. That means with the help of the X test, you are going to predict your Y test value, and you know what are the actual values. That means Y test is the actual value, and Y test predict is your will be going to your predicted value. Okay, so let me run it. Now you are checking the accuracy, accuracy based on test data. So you are using the matrix dot accuracy score. Since you are using logistic regression, you will get the accuracy score. If you use the linear regression, you will get root r two square. That means the root square error. Okay, but here in this model, we are using the logistic regression. In that case, we will go for accuracy score. So, 
it is basically the measured value why it is spreading it is basically the measured value so let me put it here then what is the actual value comma after that what is the actual value actual value basically the y test is the actual value so let me run it and let me print it so that you will get the accuracy of your model so let me run it so 93 0.93125 that means 93.125 percent is the accuracy of your predicted model okay so i am just writing here so i'm just writing as answer model prediction ninety three point one two five percent okay and let me do it okay so this was all about today's lecture for how to use the random forest regression and in the meantime i had also seen how to use the lambda function as well to for the data transformation if anyone need the data set he or she can mail me on the mentioned mail id i will send the data set thank you